Welcome back to the next section of traffic training. In this section, we're gonna cover everything there is about traffic routers. And we're gonna understand exactly how we're gonna start connecting the requests coming into traffic to the services backend. Let's take a look at the first segment. And before we really jump into routers, we need to understand how labels work because we're gonna start using labels to define the routers on the container. So to really understand how that works, we need to kind of see how the label is constructed. Here's a typical standard label, and we see traffic, HTTP, routers, router name. So this is user defined here and the rule. So to look at how this label is actually working, if we go through, you can see the first element of the label is actually the Docker service. So this can actually be traffic or other Docker services that you're using. But in this case, we're telling Docker Swarm to use the traffic labels. The second element of the label is the protocol. In this case is HTTP, but this could be TCP or UDP. So this is really telling traffic that we're using HTTP labels. The next segment is exactly what configuration we're doing in traffic. In this particular example, we're doing routers, but this can also be services, middlewares, or various different labels at this point or configurations. The third, the next uh, element is the user defined name. So this is where we're defining either the router name or the service name, but this is all user defined based on the configuration. So we'll see configuration, router name, uh, user defined name. And then finally we have the option. The option is tied to the router itself. So the router and what are we doing to the router? For example, in this example, we're tying a rule to the router. So you can see it's quite easy to understand how the router labels work are actually labels in general for traffic. And we will continue using labels continually through this section and further sections going on. So this is really the fundamental element of how labels work in traffic. So really understand how the labels work. Again, the service, the protocol, what configuration, the user defined configuration, and finally the option that we're actually tying to the configuration. So once we have that clear, we can move on to the next section. Router rules. So this is really the starting point of traffic. And we need to de define a rule in traffic in order to start routing traffic. Makes sense, right? So in this case, we have traffic, HTTP, routers, and we're gonna assign a rule to the router. And an example here, you can see HTTP routers, and we're saying our router name is who am I? And we're gonna assign the rule equals host, so we're actually assigning a host name to our router. And this, in this case, it's whoami.localhost. Now you can see there's parentheses and a back quote and, or a back tick, I should say. This is not from traffic itself. It's actually the programming language they use, which is Go. So Go has this uh, kind of funny way to like escape characters and different things. So this is actually from the programming language, not from traffic itself. So you'll see this in other applications like Docker, like Kubernetes that also use Go. So it's very understandable that this is weird, but we need to understand that this is the, the standard for using Go language or Golang. And using backticks allows us to escape some of the different characters like the dot, and it needs, the value needs to be wrapped in these backticks. So just to understand. Now, the router defaults. So every time we create a container in traffic, traffic then creates a corresponding service and router automatically. So we don't have to do anything. So if we just create a container that's attached to traffic, traffic will automatically assign a service and router. May not be the right ones. It's just starting defaults uh, up automatically. So the service automatically gets a server per instance of the container and the router automatically gets a rule defined by the default rule. In essence, that means when you restart the container, if there's no rules assigned to this service, traffic will assign a default rule to this uh, container, which could be good or bad. Maybe it's publishing, maybe it's uh, assigning it to your default domain name. So that's why we should really define all these rules up front to make sure we configure our router the way we really want it to be. Now the router entry points, as we said before, uh, the router will accept all requests so you can see we have entry point 80, 443, 80, 81. All of the entry points will be by default assigned to the router, unless we assign a label and say we want only a specific label. So keep that in mind. So all these labels, all these entry points are enabled on the router 
So for example, we may may not want uh, the dashboard router assigned to our dashboard entry point assigned to our router. We would only want maybe port 443. So we would say entry point two is only assigned to our router with using a label. But by default, router uh, traffic assigns all of these entry points. So keep that in mind when you start a new container, uh, it will get assigned a router with all entry points assigned, uh, the service, etc. Now, the next thing, the router configurations. Now, there's probably approximately about 10 router configurations available. And I took the, the most important router configurations and I listed them here. So the first is the router rule. So we're assigning a rule. Again, it's the host name. For example, host equals example.com. Um, the next thing is the entry point. So we can define exactly which entry points we want to assign to the router. For example, uh, entry point one, entry point two. This is also quite important. The next thing is we can tell traffic to uh, connect to a specific service. Now this is done automatically by traffic, but sometimes you may have uh, several services or you want to connect the front end to a different back end. There's different reasons to use this. But uh, by, by experience, I don't use this very often because traffic is usually smart enough to figure this out. But in the certain circumstances, you may want to define your service here. Mm -hmm. So again, traffic HTTP routers, uh, define name here. And then you see we're configuring the service, the option service, and it equals my service. And finally, TLS. TLS, do we want to enable TLS on the router? Uh, true or false so we can make this false or by default it's false and then it uh, doesn't accept any TLS connections uh, or accept all connections whereas if you make it true it only accepts TLS connections so that's what we're going to do in the next section we're actually going to take a look at an example application so this is again our cats application and this is actually a working application so we traffic enable equals true and then you can see our routers here for our cat app. We assign the host cat app dot local host. And you see the back ticks here. So that allows us then to assign a host name to our service. The next thing is uh, we have routers cat app entry points. We want to use the web entry point. We don't want to use 443. We only want to use port 80 for example. And the next line is the service. We're saying we only want to use the cat app service. And the final line, this is not related to the router, but in our unique case here, the application requires port 5000, so we need to define port 5000. Let's quickly take a look at what this looks like. So here's our chapter th section three, routing and load balancing folder in, in our Git repository. And you can see there's Docker Compose router, traffic YAML, traffic load balancing route. So let's just quickly take a look, traffic, uh, Load balancing and routers. Oops, that's the markdown. Let's not look at that one. Um, traffic. Docker Compose is what I want to look at. So Docker Compose, router, YAML. It's uh, essentially the same as previous, but now you can see I have included all the labels down below. So nothing new. We're using traffic YAML. So it's the default uh, entry points, 80, 443. And down below, we're then enabling the router to actually use these uh, defined uh, rules that we made. So you can see rule equals host cat app dot local host, entry point is web and service. And we can quickly uh, start this up. So Docker stack deploy, let's see Docker compose router and we'll name it traffic, huh? All right, so it's actually, I running so then we go back to our browser here and we open the dashboard let's refresh and you can see now that our our router is actually running so there's our router and it has cat app web and cat app services as previous it works exactly the, as the same as the lab but now we're going to continue building on top of this we're going to start in the lab in this section we're actually going to play around with the different paths and understand exactly how we can configure paths. We're going to break the router so you can actually see what happens when you put a, a incorrect configuration in. You'll see the error come up and we're going to continue uh, expanding on this. And then finally, we'll get into services and understand how the services work. Now, if we go back to the presentation,
The next section is traffic router resources. It's understandable. This is a lot of information. So it's really good once in a while to reference the documentation because this section is quite deep. So general router documentation, you see is uh, here and the provider router configurations. So why is there two different sections for router? Let's just head over to the documentation and I'll show you quickly. Now here, if we go into the documentation, routing and load balancing and routers, this is actually just the default routing configuration. So you see, it's not very dependent on the provider. So here's the, for example, the entry point, uh, here is a host example. Here's another example. And it's great for general uh, router information, but it's not very specific to our provider. So I encourage everyone to go down to providers, find our provider, which is Docker. And then you can see all the information regarding our Docker provider router information. And if we go to the router section, then you see here's all the rules available within the Docker provider for traffic routers. And you can see here's rules, entry points. So everything that was listed previously in the slides, you can see it's actually available here. And if you want to get additional information, you can always click here to find out why we're using specific information. So I encourage everyone to check out the router section and this will just help you understand why we're doing things. And we're going to use this uh, documentation further because we're going to define services and middlewares and everything from this documentation. So this is actually where we start expanding further on the different dynamic configurations using the Docker provider labels. All right, that's all for this section. Join me in the next section where we start covering more on services.